On the 29th of October this month, the spookiest day we'll see the release of the next species pack. And thankfully, well, Paradox has sent me a early access code to, to take a gander at what sort of horrors are to be had here. So welcome to the Necroids feature video. Today we're going to be go over all the features that are with in Necroids as well as the new civics, the new origin, the species packs, as well as the joys of the new ship. So let's dive right in and see what we have in the game at large. First of all, we're going to go over the new portraits and there are a slew of them. They are all spooky inspired with zombification, overgrowth, uh, a couple of ones that seem to be a little bit um, uh, psycherish, as well as a bunch more that are just absolutely terrifying i do feel that they will add a nice amount of flavor this one in particular does remind me of something with pauldrons and skulls etc but there is a lot of new stuff to be had here that i am definitely looking forward to including this one let's just get all the jeff memes out of our way immediately um, because well a jeff meme is a little bit forced so let's just get that done My name is Jeff. And finally, there is a new robot pop that you can have as well. The portraits themselves, once again, for me, are most likely the biggest uh, thing to be part of this particular expansion because it's the one thing that you will see the most. Of course, the origin and the civics will have impact on your gameplay, significant impacts on your gameplay, actually. But uh, we will take a look at that shortly. But yeah, these are all of the new portraits that will be part of this particular setup. Now, I've created this little empire here. It's called the Desican Assembly. Uh, they have the Necrophage trait, or at least the origin, which means that their leaders will live forever, and their ruler, as well as specialist pops, will have upkeep, uh, will increase production by 5% on their resources. That's things like unity, uh, pop growth, things like uh, bonuses to alloy income, uh, consumer goods and science, etc. Worker pops, however, will not have that up, uh, output. It's at minus 10%. This means that uh, pops of this particular type are not really good for the joys of uh, generating any sort of basic materials, energy, minerals, etc. They're not good for it at all, and also, of course, trade value in that particular case. Pop growth at minus 75% also means that they grow very, very slowly. And this is problematic because you will have to have a reasonable amount of slaves underneath you, un underneath you to actually deal with this. So we can go actually go into this and uh, do a quick edit here. As you can see, the species has a pre-patent species. That is a species that will be uplifted into your main species every X amount of years and there will be three of them at the same time that will be turned into their normal species and pop growth speed should allow for a reasonable amount of uh, worker pops to keep being built but the problem really is is that your worker pops will never be enough to fuel your economy this means that you're actually going to need to take a lot of species and move them to your main worlds and conquest is really important for these types of species because you need workers and you can whilst you can grow your own workers uh, your workers will also steadily be in, uh, turned into your main species so pop growth is really important for that basic species plus getting workers from another location is really really important uh if we could quickly, quickly take a look here at the traits necrophage as i mentioned uh, plus 80 percent years yes you can mix and match this with lithoids if you have the lithoid expansion if we for instance go to our traits here you will now see that we have the lithoid trade as well as the necrophage trait this means that uh, not only will we have insane habitability our armies will also be super strong, as well as uh, having another bonus of leader lifespan, which means it's a bonus of 130. These pops will live over 200 years, which is absolutely insane. In addition, we can also add the joys of the special traits here. So we can, for instance, say uh, remove intelligent if we want to, but we don't really want to. Uh, we want to always get moats for alloy production. And then we have ourselves an absolutely overpowered species that will slowly grow due to our workers being turned into them. This is 
exceptionally powerful and you do not want to underestimate this lithoid and necrophage combined is super super good now one thing about the pre-patent species is that they always are based on a primary species that means in this particular case they will always have certain traits attached to them so we can just say hey we want to make our species agrarian sure that's fine but as soon after a certain time they will be turned into their special lithoid variants over here and that makes necrophages incredibly potent because you know you can just generate insane amounts of resources with these guys which is so so good can go even further what we can also do is we can turn the base species into lithoids and say hey uh, our base species is now lithoid as well and then give them the other bonus let's say the exotic gas bonus for tech that means we now have two species of lithoids living on a planet which is crazy crazy good uh, sure, they will grow. They won't grow particularly quickly, but there is a couple of things that come into play here that makes this style of play more interesting. Let's put it that way. So what we can do here, and we'll talk about that later. Um, there's a couple other things like name and class. It's not really important within the grand scheme of things. City appearance. There is a new city model here, which is the Necroid city. It's all black and spirey and stuff. Origin. We've already spoken about. It is of course the Necrophage. Governing and ethics for this is basically the same, except there is a couple of ethics being added. We will touch upon those separately. But one thing that we can select here is reanimated armies. Um, for those of you who have been with the channel for a long time, I don't really care about armies. Reanimated armies to me is not really all that interesting, but still it's a nice little bonus to have if this is something that you like. And of course it allows you to build the Dread Encampment, which replaces the Military Academy. However, Mining Gills is usually good because if you want to play Lithoids in this particular case, of course if only if you have the expansion. And Diplo Corps, which is going to be important because you want to have migration agreements with others. Uh, advisor Voice, we have a brand Brand new Necroid advisor voice. Death comes for first time user setup initialized. Death comes for all sapiens in the end. But no one said it couldn't be led a merry chase. There you go. It's a brand new, uh, brand new announcer that is part of the game. Uh, Empire name is pretty standard. Ship appearance is also brand new. We got a brand new Necroid ship design that is part of the set. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's definitely different from all the other ship designs, although it does kind of remind me of humanoids. Um, but it's very pointy. Let's put it that way. Overall, it's quite good. So let's take a quick look here at how this sort of empire would play. We're going to skip away from the Lithoids setup here and go for the base Necroids itself. Because Lithoid Necroids are cool, but not everybody's got Lithoids itself. So let's uh, basically uh, dive into one of the ones that I've already got set up. So like I said, I've set up this little empire here to showcase the features of the Necrophage. I have a little bit of low stability, and that has to do with the fact that one of the worlds that spawns nearby, actually all guaranteed worlds that spawn nearby, will have primitives on it. And in this particular case, I decided to invade said primitive world, which means that we have all of these prisoners with jobs. However, because it takes time to get rulers over here, uh, we're going to have problems because, well, we don't have the right buildings yet, or at least the right amount of time hasn't passed yet to get rulers over to this planet. Basically, every 10 years, the necrophytes, which are the special pops on this planet, as they are highlighted here, 
which generate a reasonable reasonable amount of amenities, um, will turn into our ruler species. And of course, right now we don't have any rulers yet. Thankfully, if we go to our capital world, we will have a couple of ruler pups that are currently unemployed, which means that we can resettle them there. As you can see, we don't have a lot of. Uh, let's take a look here. Where are you? Yeah, this currently planet is currently shown. We currently cannot go there, sadly, which is problematic. So yeah, um, basically, when it comes to these sort of planets that you invade earlier on, is it a good idea to actually invade them? No, it is not. Because um, it's one of the main ways that you are going to get your pops in the early game. And a good way of actually getting those pops is by abducting them and then bringing them back to your capital world. And then later on invade the world because every single time you take one of these planets, it means that, well, uh, you have all of your buildings wiped off the uh, wiped clean and you may not have the resources to build up one of these planets so actually abducting these pups may be a good idea to um uh fasten up your economy on your capital world it's going to be a slow burn especially at the start because it's going to take time for you to generate enough necrophages because their pop growth speed is reduced quite significantly which means you don't really have a lot of time to generate those pops so you actually are going to need your chamber of elevation to turn your necrophytes into your main population now as i mentioned necrophytes do generate a reasonable amount of unity as well as amenities and slowly over time you can get the pops you need however it also means that slave processing centers are really really useful because well these slaves will then in turn generate the resources that you need in order to get the resources that you need but yeah uh, don't fall into the trap initially at least in my opinion to um yeah immediately conquer these worlds it does feel like a better idea to uh, steal the pops and then move the main pops later on and then settle the worlds this is also problematic on other empire worlds because once you've invaded them you will have a massive population of slaves and no specialists or rulers to stop any uprisings and you want to avoid that so having a nice large pool of your main species on all of your worlds at least your initial worlds is a really good idea this also means that you will need a reasonable amount of energy income in order to move those pops around and that's really important in addition um what do necrophages do as well well we've got our necrophage here and every 12 12 pops will be a secondary prepatent species that will turn into uh, the main species over time but yeah, like I mentioned, um, necrophages are a very, very interesting way of playing. They're, like I said, it's a very slow initial burn, and it does require a certain style of playing, mainly they're, uh, focusing on slave output production and making sure that you have the resources in order to do the things that you want to do. You want to take it step by step, at least what I can see right now. Straight up invasion is probably not a good idea, and this is a really nice way of reintegrating nihilisting acquisition because in the past it wasn't all that good at least in my opinion but with this particular setup it may be really good like i said unrest is everywhere uh, right now because i invaded these worlds rather than take the population off of it and because of the changes to the um mechanics behind uh, stellar shock which is when you're invading primitives you can't move your uh, basic pops off planet anymore as long as stellar shock is still a thing so you want to be really really careful with expanding rapidly you want to abduct pops bring your strongholds up to spec have a thriving economy and then start expanding this, this origin is fascinating to me, and I can't wait to delve deeper into the mechanics behind it once I've got a lay of the land when it comes to this, this particular origin. Then we have the Death Cult. Now, the Death Cult comes in two flavors, in either the corporate or the normal variety. Basically, Death Cults uh, come with... You know, you need to be a fanatic spiritualist or normal spiritualist for it, which makes perfect sense. You can't have be a fanatic purifier, you can't be perf inward perfectionist or ancient preservers. Still no idea what the ancient preserver civic actually is because it's nowhere on the list. I actually find it kind of weird, uh, but still... 
Uh, we also uh, we can also not be uh, necrophages, so those two actually don't really uh, mix and match. Uh, you can build a sacrificial temple, which is cool, and you have death priests that turn consumer goods into unity, and basically you have these special mortal initiates who will turn consumer goods into research, and then basically if you have enough initiates, you can use sacrifice edicts, which basically means that your um, initiates are sacrificed and you get bonuses for it which is awesome on top of that you can mix and match this with say memorial lists where you can build the sanctuary of repose uh, where it basically means uh, means that you have certain galactic memorials which is really cool it increases stability uh, because you have these sanctuaries of repose which is really nice and on top of that increases uh, government ethics attractions as long as you've got tomb worlds and relic worlds now on top of that you've got uh, death chroniclers who turn consumer goods into unity and society research this is actually really Really, really cool in combination of a couple of origins yes with certain origins you can for instance be the joys of remnants we start off as a relic world or mechanist uh post-apocalyptic even, where you start on a tomb world, where you get certain bonuses, which is really nice. So what we're going to do here, we're actually going to start out as a remnant and try this out for a little bit and then see how it all rolls. Uh, Trait-wise, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as, of course, you've got enough initiates. So being able to very quickly to breed is usually a good idea because you want to get those bonuses. Plus you're spiritualist, so you're going to have enough unity to throw a brick at yes it's like throwing a brick at a broadside of the barn that's how much unity you will have so let's go and try this out so i've set up this little empire here uh and it has all the bells and whistles when it comes to having both the wonders of memorialists and death cult now death cult as i mentioned you can now build the sacrificial temple and then on top of that the memorialist will give you uh, bonuses to consumer goods, no, well not to consumer goods, but unity and society research. There's one small problem with this, and that is that this type of uh, civilization will drain your consumer goods like nothing else. Make sure that you have quite a lot of consumer buildings up and running, otherwise you're gonna run into problems. You could of course always trade on the galactic market for consumer goods, goods on a month by month basis, but still the cost of consumer goods is pretty high. Now the cool thing is, if we go to our uh, capital world here, I've started off with the uh, Ruins Relic World start that is part of Federations, and of course I immediately build myself a Sanctuary of Repose. This basically means that we have uh, improved governing ethics attractions uh, on this planet. That basically means that anybody who is attracted to our world, say spiritualist, militarist, or authoritarian, uh, will be transferred to that particular governing ethics. However, it may be an idea to go for fanatic uh, spiritualists just to get a bigger bonus out of your um, out of your uh, resources because, of course, then you get more unity and you can go through the tree quite quicker. And, of course, you get access to consecrated worlds as well, which is always nice, which, of course, gives ourselves yet another bonus to consecrated worlds, which is a bonus to unity, amenities, and spiritual ethics attraction which is really nice. However, we also built the Sacrificial Temple. Now, the Sacrificial Temple allows us to get a, a Death Priest job as well as a Mortal Initiate. Now, the Mortal Initiate is rather interesting. It is a worker job and it generates two uh, society research with an upkeep of one food and 0 0.1 consumer goods, which is rather nice. However, if we go to our specialists, there is, of course, also the Death Priest. Now, the Death Priest has a 0 0.5 consumer good upkeep, but generates all the unity you could ever want. 10 unity for one pop is absolutely insane. Plus five uh, amenities, it's really good. Here comes the kicker, though. You can build as many as these if you, as you want. You can build as many sacrificial temples or sanctuary of repos on your planet. Now, I haven't figured out yet whether or not ethics attraction stacks, which would be completely insane, but it means that you can have a very monogamous empire or a homogeneous empire uh, when it comes to your ethics, which is rather nice. In addition, you can build yet another sacrificial temple to get more death priests and more initiates, which means more, you know, 
Unity, which is crazy. Now, the Death Breeds themselves do add a little bit of a cool mechanic here, which is the sacrifice mechanic, which means that you can basically sacrifice your pops for bonuses. So, for instance, with the sacrifice togetherness, which will kill off all of our mortal initiates, and within six years, we can do it again, because that's most likely when our pops will regrow. Basically, uh, what it does is it gives us a bonus of potentially up to 35% of additional unity. Now we'll have to pull this apart in a separate video to see what the optimal amount is of mortal initiates. However, the bonus is quite nice. And of course, you know, we can get additional unity, which is always nice with a base of 10, which is cool. Harmony uh, gives us additional happiness up to 50% in total, which is huge with a base of 10. And the bounty gives us a potential up to 30% mineral and energy output with a base of Five, which is really nice, uh, you know, and all of these give a pop growth speed bonus. Of course, togetherness overall is pretty good because of the unity bonus, especially if you're playing a heavy, heavy unity based empire, especially when you're a fanatic spiritualist, you can rush through the unity tree like nothing else, which is really, really cool. However, if we select one of these, we get the sacrifice made. Now, that means we can get a bonus. Right now, we get plus 12 unity from our single pop that we have sacrificed. Like I mentioned, we need to take this apart and basically see what is the optimal amount of mortal initiates that we can have in order to get that 35% bonus. But that's for a video in the future. Still, the amount of pops that we can uh, output that we can get from our specialists is insane. Plus 13 unity is crazy good for one pop and i like to see more of that of course our death chroniclers they do something similar but still they only have an output of 7.4 i'm pretty sure death priests are probably one of the best unity generating pops with that are possible within the game so setting up your um your planet at least your capital as a governing ethics attraction generator is would be really really useful basically because you know this is where all your pops are going to be so having the ability to create a homogeneous empire is really really awesome but yeah that's a generalist overview of the expansion i hope that you've enjoyed it i did not touch really much upon the undead armies uh it does add a new building personally i don't really care about it but we'll see but as an overview i think this is pretty much enough i want to thank you all for joining in for this video and of course thank you to my patrons as well as paradox interactive for supplying the key for the lith uh, lithoids the necroids expansion which comes out on october 29th 9th no uh no price just yet but i would not be surprised if it's going to be priced similar to all the other species packs which in europe was 7.99 euros at least that's what I would expect for the content that we have here. A review will be coming up soon as well, whether or not you should buy it. I can't do it just yet because I need to dive a little bit further into this and get a better lay of the land, but still. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always, each other.